Hi, I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello and welcome everybody to How to Paint Watercolours with me, or just simply painting watercolours with me. I thought we'd do a sunset with this one. Um, hopefully it'll be quite quick. I've stretched my paper. This is a £140 nut watercolour paper from Windsor & Newton. Some of my videos might be a bit sporadic at the moment. I'm having a lot of work done on the property. Plastering and central heating putting in and uh, redone. So I'm having a little trouble being able to produce them at the moment. So I hope you'll bear with me. This is a bit of uh, cadmium yellow. I'll give you a run round of what I'm going to use on this. Cadmium yellow, gamboge, pyrrole orange, turner red, dioxazine purple, indigo burnt umber and French ultramarine. We may not use all of them but we'll see. And I'm going to backlight the mountains at some point so I'm just dropping some yellow in. And I'll take some of the pyrrole orange and just drop some in here as we come up there. Bring some of the deeper gamboge. So that's a golden, almost like an orange tinge to it, which will come together nicely with these. And then I want to drop some red into this. Turn a red. And with the paper being wet, you have plenty of time to do this. Over the top of that, I want to bring in some dioxazine purple. I'm not bothered about the purple mixing with the yellow because it will just grey it a little bit up there, a little bit more orange in I think. I do want to bring some of the colour into these mountains. Bring this down here. Then I just want to drop some bits of colour in. Some of this will show through. Darker on these here because we put a glaze over the top and the underlying colour should show through. A little bit of red, a touch more orange. Gently bringing the colours together. Now remember, being as the water is on the paper, this will dry about 20% lighter, so you must remember that. I'm going to take some indigo and some burnt umber. Bring it round to the sort of bluey side. Into this, I'm going to drop this in the top of the sky, just for some deeper colour in the sky. Careful with the yellow, you don't want green. Try to resist the urge to fiddle. Very quick, you can bring it into the yellow. Just adding a, a great deal of interest into the sky. Darken it up around there. And then we're going to leave this to dry. Okay, the sky is dry. Um, what I normally do is I clip it down with the bulldog clips instead of masking tape yeah, because these are reusable over and over again and you don't have to keep buying ma masking tape but as your paper dries the unpainted part I'm just adding a little water to the bottom so this doesn't dry out and this will stop your paper cockling at a later stage and I'm going to take a brush and I'm just going to re-wet this background mountain here to lift it. And we'll do each mountain range separately. So I'm going to take some of the, the purple, a little bit of the indigo just to deepen it. 
and a tiny bit of burnt umber. Make it very weak. Just along the top here, along the line, I'm going to allow this just to drift through the water. Again, just peeling that off, allowing it to drift down through here. Remove any excess water before you move on to the next set of mounting ranges. This is only a suggested colour pa palette, you use your own if you don't have these colours. And I'm going to let that dry. Now that your background mountings are drying, I'm just adding water to the second range of mountings. And what we're showing here is how you can layer up a watercolour painting without it all turning into one great big mess. You can see how the underlying colour is showing through that little glaze, that very pale colour. And we're going to get darker as we come forward. And so sometimes it's nice to use the colour of the watercolour, the brilliance and the strength sometimes. I'm just strengthening that. I still want it to be on the purple side, the dioxin purple, indigo. Touch more of the burnt umber. And we can add this in. excess water that you don't want. I want to add some more burnt umber to that just to give us a little different shade on the back side of some of these because we can add a little bit more colour. So just softening it in. Maybe along this line here. I might just want to take the top out just to give a little bit of a, a misty effect there. Lost and found edge. Just taking the excess water off the brush. See how that still leaves the shape of the mountain. It's almost like sculpting it. And once you have that set of mountains in, you can let that dry. Now the middle ground mountings are dry, what we can do is come forward once again and I'm going to add some more indigo and some burnt umber. And I've re-wet this back with the foreground mountains so uh, you didn't miss anything with that, it's just very carefully and then we can begin to add this set of mountains in. You can put plenty on the brush with this one now. You're trying to get each individual mounting range separated by gently increasing the colour strength, the tone.
you see how the colour strength is nice some of the purple is allowed to show through some of the red shows through some of the orange shows through like I said with the mountains being wet you have plenty of time I'm just going to take the excess off the bottom and then we're going to let that dry now that your mountains are dry I'm just going to put a very 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 thin film of water back on the paper it's just enough to allow the paint to move not soaking wet just I hope you can see that and remove any excess water off the paper I'm going to do the water now basically it's the same colors of the sky so I'm going to take some cadmium yellow just across here pop it in here you can make this quite strong because water has depth it has a deeper color take some of the gamboge slightly deeper orangey color some of the pyrrole orange this one over here, some of the naphthol red. Just bringing these colours together, we're just getting the colours on at the moment. Some of the dioxazine purple. Even a little bit of that in here. gently bring these colours together you can say the purple and the yellow will grey which is fine and you also want to add some indigo back into this just checking it for strength Always allowing some of the other colours to show through, try not to cover them completely. Indigo again, dioxazine purple, some burnt umber. into this along the shoreline here I want to drop this in maybe a bit darker for a reflection of the mountains I've got the board laying flat for this you could do a lot more with this you could put trees in here but for this I don't want to I just want to show you how simple you could make one at sunset I'm just going to pull this down in roughly following the shape of the mountain then we're going to allow that to dry now that's all nice and dry, I just scratched in a shoreline slightly lower than the um, water line which allows that to be raised up and it shows that there's another plane that you can use there to add another level to your painting. With that I'm going to take some indigo, burnt umber, making it nice and really dark. Take a detail brush and we can start to put these trees in. Nice and dark. Doing my best to get a straight line or as straight as I possibly can. Thickening up the trunk as it comes down. I'm 
just putting some dead branches on these. You can decide how many you want to put on. I think they used to call these the widow makers, dead pine trees. roost and I'm going to take some of the same colour and I'm just going to fill this land in. I've got the board set at an angle and I'll show you the reason why in a minute. We can pull some grasses out. to pull some into the water. Clean your brush, then while that is all wet, I'm going to start here and mimic the shape of the, the land and come cl very close to it there. And then with some more water on the brush, I'm just going to touch the bottom and allow all that to drift. You must have your board set up a relatively steep angle. Bring it into the water. Allow this to flow. Just adding a little water at a time on the edge. Allow it to come down. Some more paint. I'm going to bring the tree down this way. here and there. And then you're going to let that dry. Now that everything's dry, your reflections are dry and very easily done. We're going to put some wind streaks on the water. So I'm turning it this way. And like I said before, don't go uh, mad with these. So I'm taking a craft knife and a ruler. These always work well in the darker areas if you're painting. And that's all I want to do with that really. Let me show you a very simple and effective way of painting a sunset. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, please click the like button and subscribe. This is where you get to sign it, mount it and frame it. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.